All right, here we go. Let's take a look at 1.7 part B. This section's so good, we made it two parts. Um, we're looking at in behavior of these rational functions. Excellent. So last time we were looking on tables and graphs and trying to figure out like, hey, what's the in behavior? As I get infinitely smaller, I go to the left and I look at a graph or table and say, what was happening as I go to the right? So we're going to do the same kind of stuff, but we're going to do it all algebraically today. And let's start with this example. Don't write this down. I'm going to start with some crazy big numbers here, but let's just talk about what's happening here. I've got my function right here, my rational function, and let's start with a positive infinity. As I go to the right, what's happening? I could go to the table. I could put in 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. What I did is I went ahead and I plugged in a billion. Let's get to some big numbers here. So a billion, that's a pretty big number. I can think about how many, you know, over 6 billion people on earth. Maybe I could think about a trillion, but then it gets so big, it's hard to even comprehend because there aren't things to really count at that level. So billion's pretty good. What's going on here when I put a billion in for X? Well, what do you think's happening? Can I clean this up a little bit? So I went ahead and did it. Uh, two times a billion is two billion. And then uh, look at this billion squared turned into this billion billions, this massive number right here. So it gets pretty crazy. So what's happening? Let's take a look at the top. If you have $2 billion, does it matter if you had $2 extra? No, it's like, who cares? That is like chump change. That's nothing. Two is nothing. Same thing on the bottom. Does it matter if you have negative 32? No, you could care less about that. In fact, this number here is so big, a billion billions, you don't care if you lose $4 billion. That's whatever. Who cares? You've got this massively amount of money. So I've got this massive number down here caused by this squaring feature uh, versus the top, which $2 billion is nothing to laugh at, but compared to a billion billions, oh my goodness, that's gracious. So what's going to happen is I've got a smaller number on top. Let's just say it's like one, and I'm going to have something kind of infinitely large on bottom. So this idea right here. So if you take $1 and you divide it to a billion people, how much money do you have? Well, everybody gets about $0, you know, $1 divided by a billion or a trillion. You, it basically goes to nothing here. So when you divide one by a super huge number, it goes to nothing. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're playing with really big numbers, and we're just kind of thinking about what's going to happen. Now, that was just numerically looking at an example. Can we do it algebraically? Sure. I'd write this one down, and then I am going to show you a shortcut to this because it does get pretty tedious. But basically, what happens here? The highest power wins. So when I look at the top, the, poly, the polynomial on top of the rational, the, you know, the highest degree here is 1. On bottom, it's two. Basically, the biggest power wins. So because of this, here's what it says down here. For inputs of large magnitude, really, really big numbers, the polynomial, in this case, in the denominator, dominates. This is the big thing here. The guy at bottom in this example dominates because he's got the higher power. So he dominates the polynomial in the numerator. So that's what we're looking for. One side's going to dominate the other side. In this case, the denominator dominates the numerator. So if I want to mathematically show this domination, I guess, uh, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to divide everything by the highest power of the weaker one. So the numerator's weaker. He's not as big. So his highest power is 1. So I'm going to divide everybody by x, or x to the first power. So how do I do that? Well, you just take everybody and you times it by 1 over x. But to keep fractions equal, i got to do it to the bottom. So on the bottom, I'm also going to times it by 1 over x. So you multiply the top by 1 over x, multiply the bottom by 1 over x. And again, that's just the weaker uh, numerator or denominator, the weaker side of the fraction. So what's going to happen on top when I do that? Well, you're going to end up with 2 over x over x, 2x over x, sorry, plus 3 over x. So I'm distributing that 1 over x. So if I distribute this to, whoa, what was that? Let's try that again. <coughs> So I'm distributing 1 over x here, boom, distribute it here, and I get this uh, 3 over x right here. So we're just distributing. Let's do it again on the bottom. Distribute 1 over x to all of these bad boys on bottom, so it's going to be x squared over x. We're going to have, what, minus 4x over x. And we are going to do a quicker way, but I, I do want to prove one all the way out because it's just kind of fun. Got nothing else going on here. Oh my gosh, that's supposed to be minus 32. So I'm going to take 32 and I'm going to divide it by x. Let me clean that up a little bit here. So I've got 32 over x. So everybody got divided by x because x is the highest power on the weaker side of the fraction. And then what am I going to do here? Well, let's clean this up. 
the goal is to plug infinity in, an infinitely large number. So before I do that, can I clean it up? Yeah, look at this. These are going to cancel. So I'm going to have that 2 plus 3 over x. So that's cool. The top's a little bit cleaner. Anything happen on bottom? Yeah, these cancel. This x is going to cancel out one of these x's from the x squared. So I've got that. These x's cancel. So I'm going to do minus 4. And then I'm going to do those don't cancel. So I've got this constant, this 32, being divided by x. Now I'm kind of ready to sub infinity in. I'm going to plug infinity in there. And what's going to happen? So uh, if I plug infinity in for this, what's going to happen here? So what is 3 divided by infinity? Oh, he's just gone. He's just 0. He cancels out. Because 3 divided by into a billion billion turns into nothing. So really you're left with 2 on top. Same thing here, put infinity in this thing, boom, he's gone. And what's left on bottom? You've got x minus 4, and, I, and I'm going to put infinity there in one second. Now, I didn't put it in there yet, but let's go ahead and put the infinity in 4x. And again, does it matter if you're minusing 4? It doesn't. I mean, you're really saying, hey, I've got 2 over infinity minus 4, and it doesn't matter if you're minusing 4. This just chump change. So really, you've got 2 divided by some infinitely large number, so what happens if you have this infinitely large number? It's going to take it down to zero. What would change if I did negative infinity, though? If I plug a negative, like negative billion in there, or negative trillion, well, everywhere you plugged in that infinity would have actually been a negative infinity. Does that matter here? Two divided by negative billion? Well, you can't really have a negative zero. It's just zero, so it's just going to be zero here on both sides. Excellent. Very cool. Is there a faster way than this? I hope you got some room on the side of the margin. Here, there is a quicker way. So what do I do? I really just care about the power of the top, the, high, the degree of the top, and the degree of the bottom. So he's the biggest one on top, 2 to the x. He's the biggest one on bottom. So basically, that, the rest, who cares? They're just going to get uh, blown away. It's just going to look at the biggest power you have. So we've got 2 to the x over x squared. And then now, can you clean this up? Sure, I can clean that up. So this is a fast way. So I can say, oh yeah, this x cancels one of these, so I've really got 2 to the x. Now plug in infinity. So as I go to the right, let's plug in the limit as I go to the right. It's going to be 2 over infinity. And then let's do the left side with a negative infinity so I can plug in 2 over negative infinity. So that's a quicker way where I don't really have to write all that stuff down. Uh, we're not going to have time for that. That's, we can do that later on if we want. I only care about the highest uh, power or the biggest, the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. And now get me there. I think I graphed this somewhere. Do I have the graph? There it is. So Let's make sure we're right. Does it look like the end behavior from the graph? Sure, I graphed it. See how it gets bigger here? It goes to zero. And from the left, it gets bigger here. And it's approaching zero. Awesome. That's it, man. All right, here we go. So let's look at example two. So again, I'm going to do end behavior. As I look at the g of x going to the left and to the right, here's my function right here. So I'm really, when I'm talking about looking at infinity, I'm like, who's going to dominate who? So what's the highest uh, degree on top of this polynomial? It's a third degree polynomial. On bottom, I've got a, a second degree. I've got this x squared. So those are the key players right here. The rest of these guys, they are just chumps. We can just get rid of them. They're gone. So we're only going to do this because it's infinity. We can't just, that's not really mathematical to get rid of them. But this is the shortcut version. We're just going to kind of shortcut it to say, okay, I really just care about the highest power on top is x cubed. The highest one on bottom is like 5x squared. And again, let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. Hopefully so. What's going to happen here? Well, these x squares will cancel two of these cubes, and you're left with just an x on top. And then on bottom, you've got this 5. Now we're ready to plug infinity in. So let's plug infinity in. So this is really going to be, if I plug infinity in, infinity divided by 5. So think of these massive numbers. Think of a trillion divided by 5 people. You still get a lot of money. That's good cash. And as this grows infinitely large, even if you divide it by 5, this will grow infinitely large. You're not going to slow it down by dividing it by 5. How about negative infinity? If I plug that in for x, so I'm going to plug negative infinity in, and I'm getting infinitely small, same thing divided by 5, you're not going to really slow down that just decline to negative infinity. So the sign really is important of infinity here. It really matters what's happening. You have to plug each one in individually because sometimes you get different answers depending on the sign. Let's make sure we're right. I did pre-graph these, so I wouldn't have put this in the calculator. As I go right, my end behavior says it goes to infinity, so that little line is going to go forever and ever and ever. As I go left, it goes down negative infinity kind of slowly, but it'll get there someday. Excellent. So this case, the numerator dominated the denominator. Woo, it's so intense. Okay, how about example three? Ooh, this one's interesting. So I, mis I 
mix up the notation a little bit, the H of T. So just make sure you're following along with your correct limit notation here. Instead of using X, we're using T. Maybe it's height and time or something. But again, same rules, rational function. When I'm looking at infinity, I'm looking for the highest power on top, which is just T. The highest power on bottom, which is just T. So this is interesting. Check this out. I've got 2T over T. And then, ooh, what's going to happen here? Well, it's pretty cool. They just cancel out, and I'm just left with 2. So really, keep following your steps. What do I got to do? I got to plug infinity in. Well, what happens if you plug infinity? There's nowhere to put it. There's no T's. The T's are gone. So guess what the limit is? Oh, man, it is 2. How about over here? Plug nowhere and put negative infinity. What's its limit? It is going to approach 2. So ideally, if I hopefully we're right here, let's go to the graph. Does that seem to make sense here? Yeah, what's happening here? So as I go right, it's approaching 2. Well, here's 2 on the graph. That's the sound effects of a horizontal asymptote. And as I go left, boom. See that at 2? We've created this horizontal asymptote here where it approaches it. So you may get a horizontal asymptote. That's pretty cool. Very nice. So, so when we're talking in behavior of to the right and left, we're actually looking for horizontal asymptotes is what we're really doing. So there's three things that can happen. And I just did, we just did three, all the examples. So when I look at this example right here, what is happening? Um, who's dominating who? We'll check it out. X cubed versus X squared. So when this happens, what really happens here? Well, Remember, they cancel out, and the bottom thing's going to overtake it. This is really just like saying, hey, the x squared cancels out two of these. You're left with 4 over x. Plug infinity in there, and what's going to happen? If you take $4 divided by an infinite amount of people, that's going to get you down to 0. This creates a horizontal asymptote at 0. So if the denominator is bigger than the numerator, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at 0. So the degree of the denominator is bigger, your asymptote is y equals 0. So we're going to write the equation of the line. It's the same thing as doing in behavior, going to zero, but we're going to write the actual equation line, the horizontal asymptote. Awesome! What if the numerator is bigger? So here's the example right here. Degree on top is bigger. So check it out. I've got this x squared over x. None of this stuff, other stuff matters. He's getting infinitely larger, or if you put x squared over x, remember what happens? The x cancels the x squared, and I'm getting infinitely large, so there is no horizontal asymptote here. The top runs away with it. The top dominates. So when the top dominates, there's no horizontal asymptote. If the bottom dominates, then it just goes to zero. And then we have the last case here. What happens when I say, oh, they're the same. So I've got x squared over x squared. All we really do here, those x squared cancel, and I'm just left with one third. They cancel each other out. So really, you are going to go ahead and take those leading coefficients. So the horizontal asymptote here, if you look at those leading coefficients, are just 1 over 3. And I'm going to type that out. Okay, so I just typed it out there. Y is the leading coefficients of what of the top and the bottom, numerator and denominator. So that's the rules for finding horizontal asymptotes. Excellent. If you want the formal definition, flip it on over back your nose, check it out. There's the monster nose right there. It is good to kind of just practice, make sure you're cool with this notation. Rational function, so we've got a function on top and on bottom. This is the whole idea of a polynomial. This is the polynomial bottom. We just kind of change the letters, but polynomial bottom top, no factor is the same. And it's saying the same thing we said. If the n, which is the top, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, you get that zero. So it's the same thing, but with fancy math lingo. Just know when you're checking horizontal asymptotes, you're checking to the left and to the right. You guys are checking both ways uh, for the horizontal asymptote. All right, so the last part of this, we're just going to do limits, just evaluating these things. So again, maybe I won't even say check end behavior. It's like, I just want to check one side of this. I just want to know what happens if you put infinity in here. What do you get? So again, we're looking for degree. So let's take a look at example four. Sometimes you got to clean it up a little bit. Sometimes you got to foil or double distribute just to get an idea of what's happening. This is really 2x squared minus 5x plus 8x. So I'll just combine it if that's cool. That's plus 3x. And then minus 4 or 5 times 4, whew, minus 20, and that's all over x squared. So yeah, you may have to clean it up a little bit because I'm really interested in these exponents here. So again, what do I got going on here? Well, I can see they're the same, 2x squared over x squared. So they kind of cancel each other out. And what is the limit here? The limit as x approaches infinity would just be 2. If I was talking about the horizontal asymptote, I would say y equals 2, but I'm just evaluating this. This is just 2. Awesome. 
Okay, so over here in example of five, again, I'm looking for the highest power. I can see it's x cubed on top. It's x squared on bottom. So same thing, I'm really only caring about this, this whole x cubed on top, this whole x squared on bottom. The rest we don't really need to worry about. It's gonna just disappear because these guys are taking over. And again, the top is winning. It's definitely dominating, but these would cancel out two of these and I'm left with three x. Now I'm kind of ready to plug in this whole idea of this negative infinity. So if I plug in negative infinity here, what happens? What is three times negative infinity? Well, the th I mean, the fact that we're tripling doesn't matter as much as the sign. It's just negative infinity. So the limit here is negative infinity. So it's kind of weird. The limit of this goes to negative infinity. The limit of this one went to two. And we are good to go. We can evaluate limits. All right, let's wrap this bad boy up here with some practice. If you want to go ahead and pause me and try these and then just grade the answers, that's cool. If you'd rather work them with me, I'm going to kind of go through them quickly so we can see what's happening. But these three are all doing the same thing. We're looking at in behavior, which is a horizontal asymptote sometimes. And we're looking at limits to infinity. All the same kind of stuff. So number one, I'm looking at the limit as I go to the left. The limit as I go to the right, I'm looking at the in behavior. So what do I do when I'm talking about limits to infinity? I just care about, boom, the highest power on top and bottom. The rest of the stuff we can just kind of get rid of. Who cares? The top is winning here, so that top is winning. And again, what happens is T is going to cancel out one of these T's. So I'm really looking at T over 4 is what I'm looking at here. So T is being divided by 4. And so if I plug in negative infinity in there, if I take negative infinity, divide it by 4, what do you really get? Well, remember, you can't mess with divide infinity. It's still infinity. The key is the direction. That's a negative. Negative divided by positive. So that'll go to negative infinity. Now when I put positive infinity in there, I've got a positive infinity divided by four. And again, what is that really? That's just infinitely large. So the end behavior here, negative infinity to infinity. Awesome. How about horizontal asymptotes? So again, I'm looking at the powers. I see x to the fourth on top. I see x to the fifth on bottom. I know the guy on the bottom is dominating. When that happens, it's just zero. You can go ahead and clean it up, plug it in. But I know when he's bigger on bottom, it goes to zero. I'm good to go there. Rock and roll, the last one. If I just want to evaluate this, hey, put negative infinity there, what do you get? Well, what's going to happen here? Again, all I don't care about this or this. I just care about this high power. So basically, I've got these three are going to cancel out three of those. So I'm kind of left with what? 3n squared. Ooh, interesting. So now can I put that infinity and negative infinity here? Yes, it's going to be 3 times negative infinity squared. So the square is important. Why? What happens when you square a negative? It becomes a positive. Now, again, you can tell me that it's times 3. I don't really care. Uh, it doesn't matter. 3 times infinity is just infinity. What happens is that when you square the negative, it made a positive. So this final answer, the limit as that goes to infinity right here. So that would be infinitely large. Be careful with your signs. That can be a little tricky. That's it, man. Good luck on the practice on the mastery check. Peace out.